Now entering Nerdist.com. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. Jackie giving showbiz gossip with the, G- the gossip recorder, without the not, recorder turned on. not on. Come I know on. it ain't right. It ain't right. Let's talk about stand up comedy, Lori. Come on. <laughs> Do you want to talk about stand up comedy? I have nothing to say. I have no thoughts <clears throat> on it. No, you have nothing. You have Seems nothing. Seems like a viable, fair career choice for any young person. <laughs> <laughs> The work you put in will be returned Rewarding. to you. Yes. Exponentially. You. Exponent- Trifled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah. I. Uh, where was I? Oh, I was in San Diego. It's nice opening for Bamford in a, like a GOP stronghold. And, oh, yeah. And then getting to meet essentially the... Refugees, only, they're democratic refugees. Yeah, they're democratic. They're yeah, they're sleeper cells <laughs> in the middle of San Diego that are essentially, and it was American Comedy Company, which yeah. I don't think seats more than three fifty or so. Right, and is that the one? Is that on? It's not. That's not in the mall, right? It's in the Gaslight. It's yes. A, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what happened. I walk out of the club to go get something to eat before the show. Gas lamp, right? Gas lamp. Yes. Gas light. No, it's also the gas lights. In. Because no, uh, the uh, so I hang a right out of the club. I go three businesses down, have a, have a meal. Mm-hmm. I come out of the that business instead of hanging a left to go three businesses back to the comedy club. I hang a right. Uh oh. Because I don't have any sense of direction. And if I had my self-esteem was attached to myself, uh, I would be a puddle. Uh, luckily, <laughs> I could give a shit, but I got lost. And um, and that gas lamp area is so fucking gentrified. I it's real broy. It's super broy. I was so did, you didn't even get my text. I texted you that that woman. There was like clearly a work group. Yeah. And there was one woman. They were all talking about work, and she started talking about work, and they just started talking to each other. And I almost went over and murdered them. Oh, the dudes started. Yeah, the, yeah. Dog, the dudes just ignored it. text him. was equally devoid of <laughs> contextual information that would make it make sense right. to me. Right. Okay. So uh, inside my head, there was a lot of rage, <laughs> and I needed to murder these gentlemen who, uh, and then then they would make like some weird sexual uh, con- uh, comment. Yeah. And she would laugh. She would do like that forced laugh mm-hmm. of, no, I get it. Oh, and uh, I was like, "Oh, I've been there too. Oh, I want to murder these guys even more." Oh. And uh, and they Did you, were like, all slip a ticket to the late show. Oh, I wanted to. I wanted to do something. <laughs> I wanted to slip them something more oh, like God. a roofie and a knife. Um, anyway. Wait, wait. Let's play this out. You slip them a roofie. <laughs> And they're passed out, and then you give them knives. Well, Jackie, it, you're the worst rapist ever. That's I not really, how it's done, right? My murder, my murder skills are super light. <laughs> I, uh, I don't have any, I don't have any murder skills. Well, that seems for the best. Anyway, the show was amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, cool. The room is set up weird because the green room is right next to the stage, and they have so like a tra- Chinese... are you trapped in there during well, the show? Kind of. They put up a Chinese screen, like one of those folding screens. Okay, so that you could come out of it, mm-hmm. but it's. Not really set up exactly so the audience could tell that I'm bringing the merch out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> always awkward. Always awkward. <laughs> hey, show's not over, folks. Uh, I'm right, selling things. I'm going to go set up the merch anyway. <laughs> and uh, have we talked since I came back from Omaha and Tulsa? No, but how much merch did you sell? Please. D- so much merch. Fuck. Maria has, uh, she's doing this great bit about how she really doesn't want to sell merch. But then I insisted that she sell merch. You so too. She made, oh, you guys, good cop, bad cop on the merch. Oh, oh my, my God. God. She made tea towels. <laughs> and I told you about the tea towels, right? The, ha- the hand yeah, painted yeah, yeah. queen weird. And then she's wearing a dork, a green dork forest t-shirt. Yeah. So I, we sold the tea towels in Omaha and Tulsa I brought only green shirts and I was like you see the shirt she's wearing on the tea towel oh you, you could be the proud owner of that shirt <laughs> oh my god I can't and take this capitalism $1,400 in merch myself wow she sold all she she only and of course she only made 200 of the tea towels they cost her $15 a piece she's selling them for 20 and oh <laughs> I'm like God. don't even 
don't even look at me. I'm just going to sell them for you and hand you wads of cash. And she's like, fine. And wow. I'm like, oh my God. That's awesome. Right. I would like her to sell them for 30, but I don't um, I don't think she has it in her. Yeah, right. And, and 30 is such a weird number, too. So, yeah, it anyway. is. Um, still. So, but the comedy went very well as well. That's and great. I have a new, uh, a new, uh, a new, a new chunk about my white lady meat shield thing, which is, uh, an awesome. add on, an you? add on because the, the meat shield joke is on my current album. So I can't really do oh. it, but I have a new angle, right? I do the meat shield line just because I got to sell meat shield t-shirts for uh, the donation. Yeah, you don't have to. I just spent the, a, a hiatus week watching myself sell Kiant shirts on old VHS tapes that I'm digitizing. Uh, you don't have to tell this lady. Do you see this? Okay. You see those? She see digitized all of that. And I'm halfway done. I have another about two more uh, garbage bags full of VHS tapes. Yeah. I I'm got just, this. I have, I have a, seen this some... software, which I'm, when I'm done with it, I'll be totally thrilled those away. And if you guys need it, it's for, it's for a Mac, but you can use the VCR and just. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know if you were alive when people use VHS technology. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. My day job, I digitized uh, things and it had VHS and three quarter inch capability. And so yeah. everything that needed to be digitized was digitized back in the early 2000s. This is a crazy walk down. I mean, I, I, the earliest I have is 1989. You have a set from 89? Yeah. Yeah. And Jackie, well, it ain't good. Up. No, 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 it wouldn't be. But that's got to go on the Patreon. First of all, that's I That's got to go on the Patreon. Every bit had a voice in it. I did so many voices and they're wait, can you do voices? Well, that's that's up to the audience to decide. <laughs> right. Nineteen eighty nine. That's that's their decision. But I every guess. bit had a voice. And then I was doing a lot of shoulder moving. Like I, I was really nervous after the moment after a laugh where you're just standing there. I was nervous, so I would like do an extra <laughs> head movement or I'd shake my shoulders a little bit or I'd or I'd bounce. Like yeah. I just, you know, I, you, I was a bundle Jesus, of nerves. You are the Wiggly comic of 1989. Oh my God! It's was there shouting too, or was it just uh, lots of shouting, oh. lots of like like winking? I would wink after <laughs> oh sex God. jokes. No, 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 no. Yes. And oh then, my God! No, no. <laughs> Yes, you, and you know that winking is, is a to... last resort. Oh yeah, I was. It was my first resort. I was, was... <laughs> trying desperately not to be dirty because I that was I was had gone through this. Oh, uh, you were told. I was being taught you were by all told. The, the comedy teacher in San Francisco to be clean. So I'm saying groin. I'm using words. I'm not even groin? saying penis. Like I'm just, and it doesn't. I, I think people in the audience are like, who? Okay, who do you think we are? Let's unpack are we, this. Are we nuts? first of all? In night, you're right. In the '80s, there were old dudes. Yes. Who would insist to young women? Oh God. That yes. Audience did did not want to hear women say anything dirty. Right use any sort of language or talk about any sort of bodily functions or sex in a dirty way. Yeah, and the, so a lot of those were club owners, by the way. And some Almost, of them were the male headliners that you went in front of, and some of them were comedy uh, coaches. That's everyone. Right. That's absolutely all of the <laughs> that's men. That's everyone in my life. It was everyone in your life. It was right. every single man that you talked to. Even the other 19-year-old male comics were like, yeah. oh, this is an understood thing. This is understood. Women don't do it. And... Uh, I, I was like, I remember being told that and spending the entirety of my life uh, trying to work around. I don't believe Just I ever said. Just twisting and turning yeah. and trying to talk about sex, which I was barely having in the first place, right? but also not using any words associated with sex. Right, right. Uh, so in other words, uh, telling you to get to the second story of a building without a fucking ladder. Yes! And uh, <laughs> why don't you... Or stairs. Or stairs. Why, why do you have to go in the outside? <laughs> why, why are you sneaking <laughs> into buildings, Jackie? Why is uh, that your go-to? Uh, again, because I'm a woman comic in 1984. <laughs> why wouldn't I be? Why wouldn't I be sneaking into a, a building You're from the outside? You're not invited inside. I'm certainly not invited through the front door. And the servant's entrance was, again, all men. And, uh, and, and heaven forfend, I make an allusion to the back. Back door. <laughs> Boom. Filthy. Laugh from God. <laughs> You'll never work the comedy <laughs> castle again, young lady. Oh, my God. Uh, that's actually true. <laughs> uh, 
I've I only worked the Comedy Castle once, and I've never worked. I did find my uh, Comedy Castle set. That's the only time I worked there was I was opening for John Joseph, so I was surrounded by musical equipment. Like right. I, there's keyboards behind me, drum, whatever, because yeah. he's a musical act. What was his name? John Joseph. Okay. And um, Native American. No. I always want a guy named John Joseph to be a Native American comic. Why? Because of More- Chief. Yes. Nez, what, yeah. the Nez I don't Pierce know. guy? Cause, no, because I thought that there was a comic named something Joseph who was oh, a really? Native American dude. Okay. Or uh, you might be of talk- history, because of American history. Yeah, <laughs> an actual also- Native American <laughs> soldier <laughs> right. you're confusing with a a cruise comic. Right. But that, that happens, <laughs> so don't even question yourself. <laughs> How um, could I? How could I? I'm a middle-aged white but lady. I was How like, oh, I question I myself? must be bombing because the guy said he wouldn't bring me back, and I'm yeah. like, I'm doing fine. You're doing just fine. Yeah. Yeah, do you realize that uh, that's the same guy who told me that he couldn't have me back because I was too much like Kathleen Maddie? Oh, that's right. Oh, my God. And I God. said, yeah, you wouldn't want more of that. <laughs> you wouldn't want the successful co- stand-up comedy of Kathleen Mark. Madigan. His name's Mark. Yeah, something, Ridley. Right? Yes. Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle. Well, guess what, Mark Ridley? We're doing a podcast right now. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh, my God. That was the other thing is the American Comedy Company, had, had they've added a podcast. Mm-hmm. And so the guy DM'd me. He said, oh, no, we'd love you to be the first guest. <laughs> And it'll only take Never 15 minutes. Never say that to anybody Wait, if you're trying it, to get them on your podcast. And 2018? <laughs> you getting in on the ground floor of this, <laughs> gentlemen? No. And uh, God love them. But uh, no. and, and what was the other thing that happened that made me laugh? No, that was it. <laughs> uh, so a thousand oh new articles, God. by the way. Oh, and you know this guy, right? I know Randy Credico. Randy oh Credico God. is being pulled by Mueller. He's, because he, was, he testified, I think, in front of Mueller already, and I think he, he said he was going to do impersonations. He does great impersonations. <laughs> <laughs> I would fucking love to see that testimony. I got to see that testimony. He was re- oh. He's really good. Um, Is he? Yeah, he's a friend of Roger Stone's. Did I text And you? Julian Assange. Yeah. At, like, and Roger pe- Stone's the birther guy, people, right? People... He's one of many. He's the guy. That he, there's a documentary about him on Netflix. He was a Nixon supporter. He's been some kind of. But he also has a radio always... show on Pacifica in New York. Roger Stone? No, Credico. R- Credico. Yeah. So he's. What I was told was that he was so far to the left, he was right again. I think I told you that. Maybe that's it. Yes. And I was like, like no, the no, Jill he... Stein people, they go so far over. Like who? But, you... Randy, but I looked into this guy. Yeah, his whole left thing is legalized marijuana guy. Yeah, I mean he's done that's not o- enough. The... That d- that does not make you a progressive but, or a liberal. But he was doing that during the Giuliani years. He he like did free. He's done a ton of free pro, pro bono work for. But right, it just makes you it just makes you a capitalist stoner. No. That doesn't make you a a, a a liberal, dude. Everyone, listen. Co- comics were all in danger of going to a dark place after we hit fifty. Uh, right. <laughs> you know. I mean, it's how long can you do this without your brain starting to go crazy for a you little bit? Constant vigilance. Yes, you constant. Have to, you have to make sure that you don't turn into a monster. You have to be on a podcast every single week to have your ego checked exactly, by your friend. Exactly. Whack a mole this fucking <laughs> ego because let me tell you something. He has, but he has a show on 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 this thing, and like he's done Jimmy Doors. Yeah. Yeah. And Jimmy Dore's another guy who is in danger of going so far to the left, he gets right. Uh. And because because he's so incredibly like his his socialism is so aggro. Yeah. That it becomes sort of like super bossy. And you're like, right. dude, you're killing me. And uh, it's you- not Alexandria uh, Cortez AOC socialism. She's the lady that won in the in the Bronx. Oh yeah. Or excuse me, in Queens. Yeah. She's the first. She's like the first Democratic Socialist candidate that won a primary. Oh neat. And she beat the guy that was like on the track to be Speaker, House Speaker. Oh cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. So oh, so Annie Randy used to run this room when I first moved to New York. Um, at this club called the Monkey's Paw, but it was right on Christopher Street. <laughs> that sounds like you could get a really good wish. <laughs> Have you ever read the Monkey's Paw? And okay. um, 
so we would just bark. <laughs> Liam McEnany, um, mm-hmm. uh, I met, that's where I met Bernadette Polly and Car- I, I met a ton of New York comics there, and we would bark people in. It was right, right near the cellar. Wow. And um, and just do shows for them, and it was. What year was that? It was early 90s, 98, right? 99. That was when that was when barking like sort of started. It right? wasn't super humiliating. You right. weren't because you were you were kind of I I. I I didn't it's feel humiliated. Been, okay. I stood outside the club and said, "Hey, there's a show." I w- right, you we would all just like, do a turn, yeah. and bark, right? Yeah. Well, and it wasn't. Was it? Con- was it indicative? Was it? Did you have to do it to get the stage done? Yeah, I mean, he. he it wasn't it said. He. He. Um. I think he, like he had the lesser experienced comics barking, but yeah. then I just feel like an asshole sitting around waiting for them to get yeah. me because I had nothing else no, going I would on. Do it, and there's you know you're just I'm just would do anything for a spot on a Saturday night, <laughs> right? And in New York City, right? And even on the street, yes. And, and I wasn't barking past could any be place. counted as a as a <laughs> as as doing a set. Yeah, I, I barked like in my first couple of years there. It's, um, they they didn't have barking when I tried to move to New York. You know, I tried to move to New York. Oh, that's right. In '89. Oh yeah, how different and, uh, you'd be. Right. Uh, very different. Uh, I I I got up one time at the Boston Comedy Club in 1989. Yeah. And that was it. And then uh, they, they were all bringers. And I only knew two people. And I was living in Weehawken, New Jersey. And Ooh, I was working. That's a at, horrible commute. And I was. Well, I, I would take the path in every day for my day job, which was at an insurance company. Oh, my God. So you'd have to stay in all day and yeah. then do shows at night yeah. before going home. And I was wearing oh. hose. <gasps> that's uh- <laughs> I, I do think you should hose. start wearing pantyhose again. <laughs> I really do. You should think and about it. I think. I wonder about the pantyhose industry. Is it over? <laughs> Is it over? Is anybody still wearing pantyhose? Out no, there? Meghan Mark. Every time Meghan Markle or Kate Middleton wear a pair of pantyhose, they <gasps> pump life back into it. That's it. And they do it every so often. <laughs> it's only the royal ladies that bring right, it back. Right. Right. So. Um, yeah, so whenever a comic is in the news, especially at this level, a national level, it's always some nightmare. Which like he's murdered somebody. Lewis. Randy. Oh, Cred- Randy. Credico. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, Louis C.K. Yeah. Many. Did you see the post-comedy article of the vault in The Vulture? Do you know that we live in a post-comedy world? Did you hear about that? Comedy? There's a lot of vultures. <laughs> vultures going all in on stand-up comedy. Oh First of all, you know, I like a good. Like it's it's an American art form, and sure. the more people become interested in it, the better for us as we continue to perform the navel gazing comedy. is a little intense. That's what that's what they used to do. I mean, that's what rock music. That's what Rolling Stone and Spin were for yep. thirty years. Mm-hmm. Let's ride this shit till stand up comedy it's is true. done. Until yeah, yeah. Until we all just get to work again. I used to I used to think why why aren't people that interested in stand up like they were in music? You know, yeah. in the early nineties and stuff, I'd be mm-hmm. reading Spin and like a band would put out one CD and there'd be like a giant article about him and <laughs> they had been together White for stripes. Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody for like three years and mm-hmm. I'm like these. Stand ups have been doing it for ten or twenty years, and no one knows who they are. And yeah. and why aren't people obsessively interested in them? Well, right. I didn't know I lived in the golden age of privacy <laughs> because now com- they're very obsessively interested in stand up yeah, comedy. They are. Yeah, they yeah. are. Nobody's more interested but than it, Vulture. I think it's good for the business. You know, and no, I think yeah, these yeah. articles always... going all over the place. What if comedy didn't get laughs? What's you know, it, it's fascinating <laughs> and it gets people talking, so that's fine. It made me laugh though. It's like it's comedy, but its purpose is not to get laughs, right? And I was like, I know that guy. I know that guy. Who doesn't? Who doesn't know that guy? <laughs> He's doing something else. Here, oh I got a name for you. As a matter of fact. <laughs> That guy. Oh, yeah, that's what he's doing. Oh, my God. You know that guy? Yeah, he's yeah. done it on TV. Let me tell you. <laughs> he's done that performance on television. <laughs> nice true. guy. Ni- oh, oh wait. sure. He's not a nice guy, right? Well, hit and miss. Hit and miss on that no. guy. No. You, you forgot. There's a allegations. There's drama. There's well, allegations. I, I, no, no, I know there's allegations. Yeah. Because everybody wants, whenever there's allegations, I get a call. Can I be on the dork forest to talk about my allegations? Oh, no, really? Yeah. Guess oh. what? You cannot. <laughs> That's not a dorkdom. <laughs> That's not a dorkdom. I'll tell you what a dorkdom is. Next episode of the dork forest, uh, Casey Conley, stand-up comic. Oh, I just had to cancel a spot. for With her? Yeah. Because I, uh-huh. I, yeah. 
so, bummer. Yeah. So, but, uh, but, but here's my, before yeah. you go off onto that, I knew it and I waited. I was like, oh, so I started cleaning the garage because yeah. I hate canceling. <laughs> and oh, then yeah, I'm did. like, I'm going to do it today. I'm going to do it today. And then she DM'd me a flyer and I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm so <laughs> sorry. I should have told, I knew this like 48 hours ago. I should have told you, but right. I, but then because of our group, yep. I was able to give her a list of comics who are available. Right. So we hopefully have, she's we, able to use have a, we, we have a, there's a thread uh, that I've been meaning. I don't think there's some people that I want to add to it, but I'm oh, like, yeah, we, I wanna... think we should add anybody because it's and female then... comics. We were trying to replace each other. Like if we have to cancel a gig, at least give you the person give an option. That here's four female comics that are great that are available. That are open that night. Yes. Yeah. Yes. By the way, so my one nighter in Santa Cruz got canceled mm. yesterday. Right. And, um, but it got canceled like three days earlier. The guy had a family emergency. Okay. And I completely understand. Yes. But, um, but it was a forty-five minute set that I was going to get to do, so uh, it was. Which as, as I keep getting people are listening to the show because I keep getting these emails. You could do forty-five at my uh, my weird coffee shop, and I'm like, <laughs> I kind of want to. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, so it's, be Casey Conley. Casey Conley's dorkdom is is cleaning products. Oh, interesting. not even kidding. Uh, she was awesome, and so I went and I went and I bought a new cleaning product, and mm-hmm. I spent. All day yesterday, uh, I spent three hours uh, doing half of my living room. Like I literally moved our the office part of our right, living right, room. Right, right, right. I moved everything and cleaned everything within an inch of its life. Nice. And then uh, this morning, I cleaned another quarter of it. So, anyway, I would like uh, to hire someone. <laughs> it's it's so horrible was... <laughs> because it's not a job then it, it immediately starts getting dirty again so it's right. not satisfying it's not a finished job right. any sort it... of laundry any anytime you can outsource and get your mother to do it <laughs> it's worth it it's worth all the all hell. the things <laughs> that is what everyone has always said so um Let's see. Oh, I have a comic book. Wait, uh, let's go back to Vulture. Or, oh, yeah, let's do Vulture. Well, were, were you, did you have other points to make besides? Oh, well, then here's the second Vulture article. Yeah. Was the seller owner is sad. <laughs> seller owner sad. That's uh, That was not the headline, but that should have been the headliner. Seller owner, owner sad because well, he said that it, it's hurting <laughs> the seller. But Louis C.K. created. No. No, no. No. They didn't. Essentially, there's three of them now. But for, he always, of the TV no, they show. always own those rooms. I'm going to say Netflix. I, Louis helped, but Net, Netflix is it behind everything in stand-up up comedy right with that now. sitcom. Yeah, but not many people. Why? It was on FX. It was, Hardly. It, it's not like it was. It was uh, a destination. The, for This is what I've. This, but you are more New York than I am, so I don't know. Go ahead. Well, I, I think, and I've I think never he kickstarted it, but it, but it, it's it's the popularity of stand-up comedy in general, which also you could say Louis helped do as well right but you so know. so for this guy to be sad at louis after having reaped the benefits of louis is i mean uh, it's, it's a you know what it is it's a two it's a two-edged sword <laughs> a double-edged sword it's a double-edged sword you guys <laughs> i i think that um you know sometimes the tone of voice really helps when someone's saying something true and he may and have was, other, said other things too, and oh right, could have been out of context. Go, wow, that one's going to make this baby go viral. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's going to blow this article up. Yeah, yeah. so I don't. That's know. too bad. But um, I, I mean, it's but I mean, that- you know, you're just a club owner, and you all you want to do is rake in your cash while yes. stand-up comedy is popular, and then people are. And then buy a that, is that sexual offender going to be on unsta- No. <laughs> yeah. No. Different sexual offenders who haven't been caught. Or- <laughs> right, right. The <laughs> undocumented sexual offenders are going to be up all weekend. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I had, um, there was, because uh, uh, a bunch of people came forward and I was like, because about this Randy Critico guy, because right. I'm, I'm offended. Someone who says that they're, they're friends with Julian Assange and Roger Stone claiming to be a progressive offended me and so, so i got a bunch of d- direct messages from people going no he's a good guy he's all right he's a nice enough guy he's been an okay guy for a thousand and i was like yeah so were those the two guys that remember that um i was sitting around with these two comics and they yeah. were talking about how they were going to go down to south america because for a hundred dollars you could buy a prostitute that was a virgin Oh, you know, there's, I mean, I I remember having those conversations with uh, Patrice O'Neill. 
Yeah. And Jim Norton, those guys used to go down to Brazil to do that. So that's like a Those thing. are the guys that yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, okay. I wasn't going to name them. Because <laughs> it think... was Keith Robinson and Jim Norton. Yeah. And Keith Robinson was like, yeah, I don't know. And I was I like, don't, I'm, no, I don't no, think he would do it. I actually don't think he would do it. Well, uh, the thing is, is there's you know some what they people call that Nazi? talk big and don't do it. And then there's other people that actually do it. You know what they call Nazi collaborators? <laughs> Nazis. Ah, oh, man. I, you have been on Twitter lately. I, I am so full of rage <laughs> that, you know what? And if anybody's fucking mad at me about it, you can blow me. You can you can find my dick, which I keep in the nightstand, and fucking blow it, and because I am so fucking full of rage that uh, yeah, you were right to be silent. Don't even <laughs> don't even challenge me on this. I, the, Jackie, that reminds the, me the of Kavanaugh the, thing is killing me. Hold on, so. yes, we'll get to Kavanaugh, but that reminds me of a bit of mine from nineteen ninety one. Excellent. Are you going to put any of this stuff on Patreon? I might. Okay. Where I, I just the eighty nine one, the first I, one. I say to what some guy in the audience, some random guy, by the way. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, look, you're like, well, I did, I didn't come to a stand up comedy show so I could hear a woman talk about PMS. And then I say to the straw man that I've created. <laughs> Oh my God, that defines then, a lot of my act yes, in the early then 80s. Then I say to him, well, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about my dick. And yes. then I do a couple more jokes about having a penis, but yeah, I yeah. didn't bring it tonight or something. But well, because oh because that's so stock the penis in the in the in the in the yeah um, the. I at remember the, the at first the time stock. it was revolutionary, Jackie. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you breaking boundaries? Yes. At the time? I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, ha talking about uh, dildos and stuff. I will say that. Um, What's his name? I've always I've always thought this. Do you what do you think? That Bill Hicks sort of made it okay to talk about porn. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, that's what I think. I think he he broke ground and he was just like, I'm gonna it's a huge reveal. And he said, I'm not alone. I I do a, a line that's almost verbatim or comparable about romance novels. So oh. where I'm like, I'm I'm not the only one doing this shit. Yeah, other people he, have talked about. Because he didn't seem creepy, you know. No, he, he seemed, just seemed like he a seemed normal like a guy. regular guy who was a slave to desires <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and tried to do them in the healthiest way possible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't jetting off to Brazil to right. find virgins who were uh, hungry. Exactly. Yeah. Who needed to have their f anyway? Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, Kavanaugh. <laughs> So what you're saying, here's what you're saying about Randy defending uh, Julian Assange and Ro Roger Stone reminds me of this, uh, you know, Kavanaugh. And, and so we've been watching the hearings. He's fucking appalling. He's uh, he, a disaster. He's a disaster. So Benjamin Wittes, who's this kind of respected um, lawyer and commentator, or runs a blog called the Lawfare blog that's pretty well respected. And he's a white guy, and he's like, look, you know, you could say what you want about uh, Kavanaugh, but he's a good guy, he's a nice guy, blah, 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 blah. And so somebody, a, a female of <laughs> color, was like, I am so sick of white guys defending white guys when these white guys are going to take away everything that, you know, women need to stay alive and healthy. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I get, you know. The it, nice we, enough guy defense Yeah, is, right. I'm so over it. He's yeah. he's what he's even if your daughter needs to get an abortion, you probably live in a blue state or you could if you lived in Alabama, you, you could, could afford you could afford it. Yeah. You know, and we're, it's like we're not talking about them. We're talking about these women that that they cannot cannot leave. They don't have three hundred dollars and they don't. They have can't even another take another three hundred day off to wait to 24 hours to drive six hours to a Planned Parenthood, then drive back to their job at Walmart, then drive back out again because they have to have a waiting period. Yeah. That you don't need to get a gun. Right. Whatever. Right. Okay. This is right. turning into. Well, it, well, it's turning into us being full of rage. But guess yes. what? what? Well, some people are full of rage. Yeah. Um. So the, speaking of full of rage, what about the guy who was on the Cosby show who works at Trader Joe's? I know. And they gave him shit for that. Do you know what I didn't like? It implied that somehow acting was more respectable than working at Trader Joe's. <laughs> I know. I was like, how is that? There's nothing There's, not wrong. I would I would have loved to have worked at Trader Joe's. Union benefits. I might you have be health back. insurance. I would Dude, love. Yeah, I would be applying day. in a minute if right, I if, if I, I needed work. It, yes, totally. I because I and they're all in a good mood. Right. I'm Which always is, the one. Hey, I don't want to talk during the bagging process. You guys don't have to talk to me. I'm the one that's. <laughs> a, I was. In, I'm in a sour mood. Not right. them. Right. And it's always a sign at any job when yeah. you walk in and the staff. That's my thing with clubs. If you walk in and the and the staff is happy. Yeah. I love that club. Yeah. That club 
goes up at least a notch. And what club is this? And what well, like Acme? <laughs> I know. No, I'm sorry. Just kidding. <laughs> no, like like any number of clubs, right? Right, like, right, right. Like if 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 the staff is happy, if the staff isn't happy, you're like, oh shit. Yeah. There was that club in Albuquerque. There was the the angriest. Uh, the staff was always just griping. Wait, Russ's club? Yeah. Or, yeah, okay. yeah. Or did yeah. you, the bef- before him was Ron. Did you ever I work never for did. Ron? I only worked there the once and it was Russ and he was such it was, a nightmare. Yeah, he I was. I couldn't go back. Yeah, so. there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad shit happening there. He's gross. Yeah. yeah. I've, 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 I've expressed my opinion on this uh, yeah, program about it. You, so I don't need to. You, but yeah, but did, talked your way Ron? out of how $800 Ron? headlining weeks. <laughs> that he might book in the future slow me down slow me down you guys i know it um yeah so that guy uh how was ron was ron okay before russ yeah he was a lot nicer okay he um because i like you like bynum (laughs) gary bynum that 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 crew is happy yeah, at, I mean at Tucson. Speaking of eight hundred dollar uh, headline weekend. Yeah, yeah. I mean he he's always himself, and uh, yeah. he's always sort of cranky. And he's cranky, but he's been that way since the eighties, and always <laughs> underpaid and proud. Of, it's like <laughs> at least he, he, he's never like lunging at female comics Ever. or anything like that. Like you're always when you're always the... gonna hear an hour of things he didn't like about the world. <laughs> uh, but that was it. If if he likes you, yes, yeah, yeah. And if he doesn't like you, he doesn't talk to you. And yeah. in either case, I don't mind that. <laughs> the first weekend I worked for him, I was told. He doesn't like to talk to the comics. And I said, good. I just want to go do my set. And he's right. Home. And he's right. <laughs> right. I was like, I just want to do my set and go yeah. home and maybe have a free taquito. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, the food there, uh, hit and miss. You know, it's it's, it's sure, just bar sure, food. Sure. It's not yeah. bad, but uh, it's not like a healthful. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, he used to have an empire. He had, he had uh, Albuquerque, Tucson, and Colorado Springs. <laughs> I wanted you to say El Paso because <laughs> speaking of weird tiny towns that, like Albuquerque in the eighties, yeah. was a dirtbag city. Tucson in the nineties was dirtbaggy, and oh. El Paso continues to be a hive, <laughs> a den of iniquity. Sure, and, yeah, and uh, but Tucson and Albuquerque have both been gentrified within an inch of themselves. Tucson's still great, though. Oh, God, I would I would live in Tucson. Would you? Yes. Oh, that's it's right. So Your cheap. brother, the evangelist, doesn't live there. Oh, that's right. So uh, I wouldn't <laughs> live there if you paid me. There's <laughs> mountains. There's desert. It's beautiful. It's got it everything. Is. And Albuquerque beautiful as well right by the way i heard i was listening to marin i listen yeah. to all the ads i don't know if people do oh do you listen not. to the ads yeah um <laughs> he's doing advertising for the city of albuquerque because oh, really? he was born and raised there but <laughs> it's so funny that it's to me that like any sort of government stuff is so gentrified and yeah, that yeah. they're like uh yeah this mark marin a fellow let's <laughs> give him a try <laughs> they haven't they don't they don't mind his past that's all that's that's good right that's cool. right right um, um yeah so um what else oh i will say this is that if you guys want my my comic book uh it's a comic book i'm doing with sarah benacasa and and um Pat and Patton oswalt and it's for dan Harmon's starburns and uh it's available on kickstarter and it's it's like 12 bucks but i think there's going to be they're going to be signed and it's going to be and for some reason starburns isn't just publishing it <laughs> there and i didn't read the contract i thought they were just publishing it i didn't know that it was a kickstarter this is how people give away their songwriting rights i know it to uh record companies jackie so i guess i'll get paid if you all get involved and it i mean the thing is is if you it was cool to write the write the script anyway cuz i the guy who edited it is this guy named brendan wright and he was an amazing editor. I hate editing, right? I hate anybody. Like I did the Risk uh, storytelling show, and yeah. Kevin Allison wants you to tell him the story, and then you you, you get uh, feedback. Guess what? I've never done the Risk tell- a storytelling do you show. You know why? No, because you don't want. Yeah, I do know why. Yeah, you just described that process <laughs> to me. Exactly. You're like, you know what feedback I like? The audience when I tell a joke. Yeah. That's the feedback Thank you. I enjoy. That's all I want. So, but I will say this about uh, Kevin Allison and the risk thing. I always end up just writing the story out and sending it to him because I don't want him interrupting it. Oh, I my God. I just want him to read it right. and then give me notes. Right. And 
there's absolutely nothing wrong with a second draft. So yes, the right, notes right, right. that I get back and the angles that he comes up with has always made the story better. Still irritating. Now, uh, yes. Brendan Wright, it's a script, so I figured there would be back and forth. Right, and right. I've never written a script before. So I wrote the script. I sent it to him. He had the best notes. The best. And I learned how to sort of write a comic book script from this guy in the process. So even if it doesn't get fulfilled, though fucking... Give me twelve dollars. Um, twelve dollars is worth uh, the price of, of a comic book starring you, it's Sarah Pat and Patton, yeah, so. and any number of other people. So yes. get on it, and it's it, it'll be neat. But uh, yeah, but it was totally it was worth learning how to do it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but I, I I love I love learning new things that I didn't want to learn how to do. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and we were talking before how Dan Harmon uh, unfortunately can't tweet about the uh, oh, comic right. book because, because he's he, not on Twitter. He anymore. left Twitter because what did he do? He, I guess, and this, maybe it's funnier than it sounds, <laughs> but he made a video where he, I guess he raped a baby doll. Okay. It was a doll. Yeah. So he didn't substitute in like a baby. And no, it was a doll. It was, it smash was cut to an actual him fucking a doll. Oh, did he? No, I don't know, but that'd be how I would... Oh. That's how I would shoot raping a doll. I don't oh know about God. you guys. I'd make it look like a real baby, <laughs> and then I would smash cut to... Fuck. You, know how, you like, have learned a lot in this script writing process. Well, Jeez. exactly. No, but you know how like they uh, in, in movies where they're like... Uh, they they punch the, the they pretend yeah. to punch the real actor yeah and then the hulk grabs a doll of loki and smashes it both ways yeah so that would that's what i would imagine raping a baby would look like right in a cinematic can i stop thinking about this yes yes Thank you. fair enough <laughs> i keep digging i'm gonna stop now and climb out of the hole that i've dug and uh we don't need to when you're in a hole you're like let's make it deeper <laughs> Let's keep digging. Other people have the instinct of trying to climb out, but not <laughs> right. Jackie. Someone give me a ladder. No, oh, I'm not allowed a ladder again. Why no ladder? And uh, so is it time to do comic of the week? It is. Oh, my God. How much time have we done? 36. That's not bad. Let's do it. Uh, Monica Piper. Monica Piper, who is of an age, I believe, of us. She, yeah, she's like the generation ahead of us. Okay. Right? Like she had so, a Showtime special and she had, uh, she had, she had specials yeah. back in the 90s. Oh, right, right. Specials. When barely anyone had specials. Right. Yeah. And, and she's a murderer is what I've heard uh, on stage. She's amazing comic. Yeah. Uh, she's doing a show with Wendy Liebman and Sue Kalinsky and Carol Montgomery. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Now, what's her website? It is uh, MonicaPiper.com. Monica Oh, there you go. Uh, I don't know if she's on Twitter and all that. So I don't think she is. I don't think she so, is. So, but go to monicapiper.com and check it out. She was like a, a like a headliner in the '90s. Yep. And then she started writing, and she kind of like went into the writing. Yeah, it's a rabbit hole that I appreciate that you did not fall into, because it's why I've never wanted to write for a show. I know. Is because I'm like, I don't want to bleed off all of my creativity. You write monologue jokes, though, it's for very, someone it's else. It's highly specialized. Which is super specialized, which means you can still do your own personal stand-up. Right, right, right. Like you and Kylie do a lot of, it's all your stuff, then, yeah. when you just go and do stand-up. Yeah. If, like, because the new sitcom writing, they want you to mine your own Yeah, they want life. the stuff you would actually be doing on stage that yeah. night, but they yeah, want yeah. it for their show. Right. Right. And I don't want to give it to them. mm Nope. Now, I would for a lot of money. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I suppose. Never say no without a number. Um, yeah, you're, you're acting like you just heard that advice you've been giving me for three years now. <laughs> it's true. I suppose it would. But it would seriously have to be a lot of money. Right. Here's the thing. Like, once you you put your story in, then people start working on it, then it all gets changed. And all, you know, like, two drafts later, yeah. you're 35, you weigh 120 pounds, uh, you know, whatever. It, it all gets twisted. Two stories I heard. Yeah. One is, uh, uh, I think it's Jordan Peele. Yeah. Decided to go into directing. One of the reasons, uh, the other reason, of course, is that you always want to be in charge. Yeah. Um, is, uh, is that he wanted to stop trying to be like the super fit guy who lived off of uh, bars. <laughs> Really? Yeah, he wanted he just to just want to eat diet? a sandwich. Oh yeah. my god! And he wanted to stop working out six hours a day. But he's 
he doesn't look like he ever did that. He, well, I think he tried. Oh. And it drove him mad. Sure, of course. Yeah. If you don't enjoy and, that, then right. why would you? Right. And so, and then the second story I heard was that uh, a friend, a, a, an acquaintance, a friend, a person that we know, a yeah. work person. Wow. It's almost like you are ignoring the pen and paper in front of that you. That are right in front of me. Right. Um, so, um, <laughs> this guy, the guy who does that on that TV show. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. Okay, so um, he he told me how much he made for that show yeah. and how much work it was, and it's uh, not enough money. <laughs> it's not enough money, he's and he doesn't, show. and it's going to be fine. Yeah. In um, in 10 years, he's going to have all the money in the world, right? Yes, it's it's his first show, it's and his he'll first get show, more. And, and, yeah. and, and 10 years from now, he's going to own show business. Sure, sure, sure. Because uh, he's a relatively young white guy. Yeah. And... Uh, but it, I was like, he was talking about how exhausted he was, and he, and every, and it's, it's just like us. It made me laugh because he was talking about how much he loves doing the show and how much he loves all this work and stuff, uh, but how exhausted, and how irritated, and how it's not enough money. And he was like, super grateful. Every other sentence was, but super grateful, very happy, <laughs> uh, so exhausted, kind of irritated. They don't respect me, and but I'm super grateful. <laughs> and it was like that for like literally three minutes it oh was hilarious God. and perfect yeah and then later i talked to another friend who was sitting at the same circle yeah and i said do you think he lied about how much money uh he was making and she goes oh no i believe uh, uh believe exactly yeah he he makes exactly that much money which is just enough money to almost make it worthwhile right but starter job yeah once you're in in that and once you know how to show run and write i mean you're, yeah, and that's all he's just... clearing. Wow. And that's what he's clearing, which is still, and he's like, it's still more money than I've ever made, but it's not enough for the 90 hours of work No, a week. because you could make that headlining, you know, with travel, you know, you'd be traveling and stuff, but in a year well, you can make that what, headlining and, and only work. And if you have your own show, mm -hmm. if, if you have a show that is like Dan Harmon yeah. can travel and fill rooms and make... and. Rape uh, dolls, and, right? And and rape dolls and still make serious money. Yeah. When will that be us? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what else? You got anything? Um, Did you write a list was, of things that you wanted to talk about? No, Jackie, I, fly, I freestyle this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I had this whole week off. Oh, that's right. I didn't pick up any work. I mean, any road work. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was like, all right, I'm gonna start the project to figure out where things are in the garage and and move them to play oh, that's right like, every did, time i'm like digitized for eight yeah, hours I, I a day have, <laughs> yes i've been doing that i have uh i just have stacks and stacks of vhs tapes that are taken with me all over the place from house to house and going i gotta i gotta digitize these wow and so uh i finally put it all together and learned the software and have Luckily, been doing rooftop it rooftop was doing that to me in the 90s <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but uh so now I'm, I'm like clearing out space and i have i'm putting things places where i know where they are instead of you know me going where's a tape measure and then spending an hour looking for a tape measure i'm right. like oh I, i'm gonna have a certain place for it the weird thing about digitizing is that mm -hmm. it's real time you what have you to you have to oh. digit you have to play I the know. whole tape into the computer and then like there's no way to speed it up yeah exactly <laughs> it's weird Oh, well. But then I was, and uh, Emily Heller gave me a great idea. Yeah. But uh, if she's like, you could tell a story, your story of your life through. And then I started watching going, instead of maybe the whole story, I could be like, like menstruation, right? And I see the, like the first joke I tell about it. And then the second one. And as I get older and older, how the story changes a little yeah. bit and just do it by topic. There's a through line of your bodily functions. Dude, there are so many your jokes fertility. in me going, I'm not going to have a kids. I don't want kids. <laughs> if I do have a kid, like the setup right, starts right. to change as I get older. <laughs> if I do have a kid and then I'm six months pregnant at Acme. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Who doesn't want to watch that I know, show? I know. As the hair is changing, as the shoulder shoulder pads and all, all that stuff yeah <laughs> yeah so that's my project because no one else is going to do that for me uh, the only person that's going to interested in that is me so i might as well do it myself yeah you should totally do that and yeah. uh, and someone should fucking be interested in that because that you're like uh yeah because that's gold there, i wish me. i had i wish i had that kind of 
arc of, of you might when you start because there's so many bits you tried and worked for a couple months and then dropped. Yeah, but I don't think I have them on. Um, ah, me at 26, going. I'm. I feel so old. Yeah. And yeah. the audience groaning, and yeah. I'm like, no. Why are you irritated? <laughs> and I remember feeling so old. Yeah. I think well, you, were, you were Margaret soul because Margaret Cho was like 24 mm-hmm. and she was like, you know, just work, she was work. She had oh, just, she was being taken advantage of already. <laughs> ah, yes, I wasn't being taken advantage. I was you're too like, old to be taken advantage of. <laughs> you're like, Margaret, was well, that sweet spot? Where's oh my God. Where's my sitcom that you're going to make me uh, have an eating disorder over? Well, yeah. Jeez. And then before that, she had she started doing colleges like her college. Like she was just doing regular gigs, right? And mm-hmm. then she got discovered by NACA and all of a sudden was making like two hundred thousand dollars a year in like ninety two. Wow. You know, doing and doing colleges is the worst way to make money. You can make a lot of money, but it's it's horrible. It's a grind. When I remember Pete Lee telling me that he had ninety six colleges oh two God. years ago. And I was like, What is that like? And he said, Well, it means you get divorced. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I was like Oh shit! And he's like, mm. and wow. uh, he was like, I do forty five, and then I take a break for a month, and I just cry and and sleep. He'll do forty five in a month. He'll no in a row. Oh, in a row, and then yeah. he takes a month off. Yeah, and then oh, he takes a month God. off, and then he'll do the other forty five. And then he's d- done for the year, basically, and hang out and do spots or something. Well, he's got you know he's got TV stuff, and yeah. he's got he's got, and he also wants club work, and he's sure, got sure, stuff sure. like that. Tracy Ashley as well. Uh, was doing something like that. She had like a hundred. No. Yeah. I think she had a hundred one year, and which is, if it's at least two God. grand a pop. Oh yeah. And it's not. It's more than that. Yeah. 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 At that level, wow. I did one NACA. Did you ever do a NACA? Yeah, I did a couple NACAs. I hated it. Yeah, it's I awful. Just, I just, you know, I. How about this? You want me at your college? Book me. It turns out I'm on the internet. You can watch my stand-up comedy. Knock yourself out. That's not how they do things. Exactly. And NACA, it's like it's like it's like Diamond. They're the only g- people in the game. They own. Oh right. They, right. They, they, you have to go to NACA to get work in colleges. I like your only reference is your elite status in an airline club. No, uh, Diamond is uh, the distributor for comic books. I oh, realized oh, as I soon thought as it, I said it that I it was you also your... a terrible reference. <laughs> uh, I thought this you com- meant it's it's like the first class I often get bumped to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wouldn't know about that, <laughs> JetBlue Queen. Exactly. Uh, I've been trying to do the Delta Sky Club story on stage. Oh yeah, I like yeah. it. And um, and it uh, it doesn't have an end, but I it, I think it'll tighten up nice if I uh, get to do it ten thousand times. Yeah, that's what you need to do. Basically, mm-hmm. I um, JetBlue has added flights from Burbank to JFK. Direct. But, yeah. But so so I'm doing one of them next week, which is okay. So I'm doing Tinder Live. Oh, yeah. if you're in New York, I'm doing Tinder Live at yeah, yeah. Uh, Littlefield in Brooklyn. Is that Lane? Yes, Lane, Lane Moore. Moore. Yeah, that's awesome. That's the only show I'm doing because it's it, it's in Brooklyn. Yeah. And so I didn't book any spots or anything like that. <laughs> right. So I'm flying. So I'm taking the old red eye on Friday mm-hmm. night. It landing at six in the morning if I'm not diverted to Denver and Salt Lake City like I was before. <laughs> right, right. Doing going if to the Brooklyn wings break. Doing yeah. a spot, doing lane show, doing Tinder Live. And then I have a seven I think it's a seven forty eight AM flight out. That Be- lands here at like eight AM as well. Basically, yeah. Wow. Or ten AM or something. But before here JetBlue used to only have the 5 p.m. flight out, which is perfect. You spend all day in New York. Yeah. Take the five PM out. You're back here at eight eight PM. To put your child to bed. That's right? it. Now that one, that flight is like three hundred dollars more expensive than their new seven fifty eight a.m. Oh. flight. So I'm like, I can't you unless bastards. I buy that one nine months in advance. Right. For some reason, I'm it's never on gonna. Sale. I'm. Yeah. Fuck. That's crazy. Yeah. That's unfortunate. So I'm glad they added flights, but now they made the the good flight so unaffordable. I'm going to be leaving it. Waking up at 5 a.m. Right. After doing spots all night on Saturday. Mm-hmm. After doing a red eye. Yeah. Those, these, those weekends are going to kill me. Right. That's all I've, I, I don't, I'm just being supportive. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the way that, it's uh, the nature of, 
I think you should pick up more sets. I think because what Tinder lives at eight, right? It's at eight thirty, but it goes till ten. And then okay, so say you I could mean, do an eleven, you could do a twelve. I know, you could but do a I, one. now I got to wake up at five a.m. the next morning. So Just stay up. No, I can't do that. I yeah, can't do over. that anymore. Those days are done. Yeah, That's I can't true. do those. You're right. I have to be a, a mother the next day. Right, right, right. Exactly. I God, think- and, and last night, I'm not going to, there was some family drama last yeah, night yeah. around 6 p.m. Yeah. when I was curling my hair, getting ready to go out for a show. Right, because you didn't have him. He was. No, no, no. I did have him. And then you didn't have him. We had a fight. Yep. He ran away. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't find him. Yep. So we ended up calling the police and there was a helicopter circling overhead looking for an 11 year old Hispanic male. <laughs> and he had gone to a place where I'd never taken him before, but it was very safe. Mm-hmm. I saw I didn't look. I was looking at Drew Wiener. So I was looking at all the little places we've gone. Right. His, you know, babysitter was looking like there was a major search party out. Wow. And um, and then he just appeared you know, but it just resurfaced. Yes. So that's a separate thing. By then I had canceled my spot at mm-hmm. on Laura House's show. It started at 7 p.m. Didn't cancel the 9 p.m. <laughs> like, uh, let me just had- say something uh, knew that I was looking for a set. <laughs> did not call me to see if I wanted your 7 p.m. set. I'm sorry. And I yes. would have put it out to the list, <laughs> but I was uh, I was. It turns out you were in a panic. Yes. So fair enough. But, um, um, but, <laughs> I'm so uh, sorry you weren't thinking about my. Needs. I know. But I was always like, I know we're going to find him in time for the 9 p.m. Right. <laughs> We got the whole police department looking for him. Right. And he, you know, it's it wasn't like a four-year-old wandered off. No, no. Okay. And children. Um, and he's barefoot on a leg brace. Come on. How far right. can he I was going to ask you how his leg's doing. Uh, clearly, it's doing well it's enough better. that there's flight. That he can, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, he can he can have temper tantrums and flee now. <laughs> so, so um, good for him. <laughs> right. So, uh, so he was found. And there's still family drama that needs to be worked out but then he sure. went off with his dad because mm-hmm. he was just such good with his dad that night and uh so i'm at home and i it's i text laura it's like 7 48 the her show ends at 8 30 yeah. like, i can't there's no way i can get to you and part of me is in high trauma because my my yes. son was missing for an hour yes. but the other part of me there i have another part of me that i don't want anyone to meet which is like <laughs> business as usual <laughs> So I love that part of you. That's my favorite part of you. That's not true. But, uh, <laughs> that is so. So I'm like, I'm sorry, and she's like, Don't worry, I filled it. You're good. And of course, my feelings were hurt that I was replaced so quickly. But um, so quick. Yeah. So, so then I'm. So my mom is. Uh, and is this I, tweet, water I tweeted. Infused? That is wonderful. Kyle's water, oh, um, unless he didn't drink it. I did not. Okay, so you could have the red water oh. if you want it. I put those guys, I put them out for both you guys. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. We're going to have a little water, it turns out. Let's so, do it. Um, so sorry. Okay. So uh, uh, where was I? You were talking about um, Laura House, and then you went to something else. Oh, I so my mom. You. Okay, so go. she, and I tweeted this last night, that I can't have any emotions because my mom has all of them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she is in she's like convulsing. I'm like I'm like, oh if my son kills my mom right now, this is okay with me. <laughs> how can her how can her heart take any more of these emotions? But she's every emotion that every a person emotion. can have. Yeah. You know, fear, oh what if? Like so I I uh, there's no room alone. for me to even feel yeah. sadness because she'll jump in on it and and be like, oh, Are you okay? Like I don't want to get in, involved in your little It'll circle escalated. of emotions. So yeah. I of course look like a stone a cold Nazi who yeah. doesn't care, which yeah. is what everyone's opinion of me in all my relationships has been. Fantastic. That I am. Um, you're some sort of monster. Yes, yeah. yeah. I do. It's all inside. Okay. Right. You're not allowed. Yeah. So uh, someone has to keep their shit together. And unfortunately, thank you. you have been assigned. Yes. Yeah, that is my role bullshit. in the family. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm like, okay, my kid is with his dad, and uh, my mom is heaving on the couch and i have a spot at the comedy store i guess i'm gonna go do it yeah what else am i gonna do stay with her right right what you have a nice crying jag mom i'll be back yeah yeah because the thing is is she's not gonna have a crying jag if you, she doesn't have a witness <laughs> it's uh <laughs> she, she probably stopped as soon as i as left as soon as you left because that's i mean everybody she went back to er on hulu <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of her autobiography. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's ins- yeah. So that's that's your that's your. I totally. 
Yeah. So I, I'm I there. Was thinking and, about- I mean, I was like feeling weird and. And, uh, you know, there's part of me like, all right, let's work on this new thing. And part of me is, and, 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 you yeah. know, I witnessed there's, there's some anger, some, uh, my child has an anger that needs to be addressed. Yep. And, um, so, well, I mean, the thing is, is it sucks. Childhood sucks. You feel powerless and you feel like you can't fix anything. What did I, I wrote something that I thought was, uh, important. Um, yeah, he's. You know, the thing is, is it's everybody's told that they're supposed to be happy all the time Mm -hmm. and you can't be. And if you're 11 and people are telling you you have to be happy all the time, that's so impossible. And I he never just have changed told him that. By yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's in a and he's in a leg no, no, brace. No, you're not telling him he has to. Yeah, be. I'm telling you, like every television show. Oh right. Every uh, it's in the fucking air. It's in the zeitgeist. Yeah. And if you aren't happy, you should take drugs to at least make yourself numb. And you're like, no, be sad, be unhappy, be angry, be all the things, because eventually you'll be happy again. I mean, that's the way it goes. It's unfortunate, mm-hmm. but that's life, right? Yeah. And it's, it's 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 impossible for him to know that because he is a child. Yeah. And the learning process starts with not knowing shit. Right. And then knowing stuff. That's how it Excuse goes. Excuse me. Oh, hello. You're done with me. I take it. <laughs> <laughs> My TED talk is also over. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that was just weird. That was surreal. Just yeah. being at the store, you know, I was oh, right, I was right. doing, as I said to Laura, I'm doing a produce show. It's not like I'm past, <laughs> but still, and it was, you know, and, and, uh, and I'm talking. It's at, not like I'm past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. But, uh, Adam, I don't know. It was a weird, it was a weird night. And then I, then I came home and I talked to my friend in, in the, uh, Cheryl and oh, good. We just talking about childhood and all that kind of stuff. And. You know, yeah, someone, my kid you was upset need someone about. to talk you off yeah. the ledge because the thing is, is even if you don't realize it, you're on the ledge going, how could I fix this? And you can't because right. childhood blows and you're like, cause you are as supportive and as loving as you possibly can. And there's, you're beating yourself up for not being like last episode or two episodes ago, you're, you were like, I feel like I'm not there enough. And you're like, but I think yeah, I mean, the th- there's so much guilt in raising children and being a child that you're all kind of fucked and everybody just has to kind of keep plugging along. Plus, and I can only know, see that because I see it from a far away. Right. Kids don't know what you're overcompensating for. Like, I like I, I feel like I'm very artistically generous. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to draw, all the, that's fine with me. Just don't draw during math class, whatever. Yeah. But... Oh, but that math other pro- parents would be squelching or, you know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. And so, I like... I don't know, but he, he only knows me as a mom. So I, I, no matter what you're, you're going to be, you're going to be, you know, bayoneted by your child, right? Right. For for things you're not doing because you don't and you can't see them, you right. can't comprehend them because of who you are. Right. It's just gen, it's general. You it's know, just tough. Yeah. It's tough, and it's and it's, and he he will figure it out. You will figure it out together. You will figure it out separately. And it's just a pain in the ass. And I'm sorry that you're going through it. I'm sorry he's going through it. I'm sorry I missed a spot. <laughs> um, Boom. It's been tragedy all, all around. All around. <laughs> Everybody, you guys, the lab missed out. The lab you know missed out weird, on your new stuff. Is so the, the police are over and uh, I'm like, oh, look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Any of the same guys? No. Uh-uh, no. Ah, bummer. Um, do you know why? Because we have an incredible budget for police force. Sure so, uh, <laughs> but they're, they're it's like, always going to be a different cop. Uh, is there any place he likes to go? Or and and I, you know, like if I was a kid, there'd be like fifty hiding places you could look for, right? Yep. But kids now, every pl- every time they play, it's it's managed. You know, yep. moms are texting each other. Let's do a play. It's called a play date. It's all well, everyone knows 30s. where their kids yeah. are all the time. The kids like to be indoors. They like to be on uh, watching YouTube or playing video games. Like I'm, I'm people have said this before, but it's just it's uh, I, I realize like this might be the first time he's darted off by himself. Right, right. Without me knowing where without anyone knowing where he is. Right. It's a Jack London at, at almost for him. 12 years old. That's right. fucking crazy. Right. Maybe like he you- should be out for hours a day, you know, playing with frogs and me just yelling his name at 6 p.m. dinner time. Right. 
Does he have any interest in sort of the camping kind of situation? I don't think so. <laughs> You're not really camping people. I'm not a camper. But, right. You know? Right, right. But uh, there's, there, what was the, um, it was, uh, uh, my niece went on this winter camping thing that my brother sent her on. Yeah. And it was kind of, uh, it and it was, and she was older. And this was something, I think she was 18 or 19, and it was, uh, it was a winter camping, and it was three months. And I remember, it was probably seven years ago, eight years ago now, but her Facebook feed on it, because she was 18 or 19. And it was one of the greatest things, because she was always, she was raised like that, where it was play dates and, and, and separate houses with the mom and dad and stuff. And, yeah. and she was pretty covered at all times. And she was mostly an indoor kid. She liked her dog, but that was, that was the only sort of outdoor kind of thing. And she goes on this camping trip. And um, her Facebook post on it was three days into it. She said, the first day I cried. And the, and the, camping, the camping director guy said, cry it out. We can't turn around. <laughs> and he just, he literally was like, yeah, nothing's going to happen. I don't know what you hope to achieve from that. But if you got to cry, uh, we're still going. And you're not going to be back for about two weeks. So uh, uh, don't forget to catch up. Did I tell you I did yeah. Outward Bound once? That It was that. It was like that. Yeah, that happens. Um, did you do Outward Bound? Yeah. I've always wanted to do it Outward Bound. It was awesome. How many weeks was it? Just one week when I was like early in comedy. Okay. You know, at, <laughs> uh, when I was like 23 maybe. Okay. Where I was still, t- you know, like do, I, I'd Try do a set out. and then I'd recover for a week from my set emotionally. <laughs> 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 like I couldn't, I could, you know. So, uh, yeah, I went to the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. And um, uh, it was... Summer? Outward bound or winter? Yeah, in the summer. Okay. And I remember, like, I was barely... Um, it's always nice when someone's having more of a nervous breakdown than you are. Because you're like, oh, I'm not the (laughs) worst one. Yeah. Whew. You know, and this... And I was, like, chunky. I was just coming off the thing I started doing with Ginny and Roth that Ginny and Roth books of just eat whatever you want to eat and get, get the mania out of your head about okay. fetishizing certain foods. Okay. And so I'd gained like 60 pounds, right? Okay. So I was like huge. I was like, what am I doing? What's happened? I used to be a swimmer. What's happened? Right. Okay. I, I, spiraling. Wow. Right. And this the, is a glimpse. <laughs> I like it. So this other, and I was the oldest, I was like 23 and yeah. everyone else is like 18. So mm-hmm. of course I felt 40. Right. Yeah. And, um, and they're all thin and everyone's like barely not fucking each other. Like it's, yeah. (laughs) And, um, but I, I was able to keep up and stuff because I was fit from swimming. Right. But there was this girl who was anorexic yeah and that I, at least I knew enough to go, Oh, this is a problem. And she, there was this one point where we had to scale a 14,000 foot peak and, um, it was all or nobody. So if, if everyone, if one person dropped out, no one would do it. We all okay. wanted to do it. Well, I didn't want to do it, but I pretended I wanted to do it because right, I didn't want to look like pressure. someone. Yeah, right. yeah. So, <laughs> so we had this girl who was anorexic, who was like, I'm not going. And so I, so I started <laughs> talking to her about food and her dad. <laughs> I'm just assuming we had the same problem. Yeah. And like, if you want, if this is, if you want to fix your food, this is how you're going to do it. Cause you're going to know you have a little part of you that could do it because you climb this fucking peak. Yeah. Cause everyone else is like, it'll be so beautiful. And I, right. and I was like, no, nope. <laughs> that's not, that's not how you get this girl. Goal Cause oriented. I, this is how I'm getting me as I'm telling myself, yeah. you can accomplish these things. If you get this, if you do these things. So I talked her into it. Oh, you did. And we, we did the peak. Yeah. The two years. Yeah. Well, that was well, your the buddy. whole group. Yeah. The whole group, but that was you were the one. Yeah, but I but I but if she hadn't been there, I would have been the one they would have had to talk <laughs> to. But I was just 1% in more in a better place oh, than that's she awesome. was. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's was a, really that's cool. That's a heartwarming uh Lori Kilmartin story. Last right one. There. Last one. <laughs> we're at an hour. Goodbye. Now leaving nerdist.com.